Hi Tai Chi folks, my name is Nicholas Bloor from Chi Fit. Um, today I'd like to present you a little uh, reasonably unknown Tai Chi form, uh, classical form from Yang Banhao who died I think it was 1890 or something, so just before uh, the turn of the 20th, uh, 20th century. Um, Yang Banhao was known for um, his aggressive bellicose style disposition. He was ready to fight, he was ready to, to bang on. Much unlike his brother Yang Chen Fu, who was, you know, a big fat happy fella, who watered down Tai Chi and made it easier. Apparently Yang Banhao never changed his grandfather Yang Lu Chuan's forms. He kept them the same and from there was distilling the martial elements from uh, the slow form, from his grandfather's form, the Yang Lu Chuan form. Or, or Yang style. So he created a form called the Small Sand Sao, which is based on the classical nine movements of the uh, of Sang Chang Fang or whatever his name was. Right. So I don't get into lineage. I don't get into master worship and stuff like that. I learn from the bits and pieces that I'm given. I distill them in what works in class with my students. Um, and, and change what's necessary and keep, keep what's useful. So, um, the nine movements in the form are up to single whip. Okay, so I'm just very loosely, and because I'm talking, okay, there might be a few errors here, but all these movements here are in the small sand cell. One of the biggest mistakes we see in Taiji, and probably one of the reasons we keep seeing people going to a ring with an MMA, oh, chair, an MMA guy and getting their asses handed to them, is because they're trying to use movements out of the slow form for fighting. Oh, I've gone past. Bah! I've gone past where I should be. All right? So the last posture for the small sand sow ends up here at single whip. So we see these guys going into an MMA ring and you know hopping into a hopping into a classical stance like they see on Hollywood and expecting to be able to defend themselves. It's not going to work. The form doesn't teach us necessarily how to fight. It teaches us about natural movement, about connectivity, about sensitivity, about how to use our waist and our body to gain power. Um, it's an encyclopedia of techniques, but it doesn't teach us how to use Tai Chi to fight. There were other forms and other training methods to take what we're learning out of the slow form and apply it to real world violence. Okay? So if you're gonna hop in the ring and expect your classical Tai Chi form to help you defend yourself, you are kidding. Okay, so the small sand sow, the second posture of our form, okay, arm, arm in the small sand sow, okay, we start with our arms relaxed, okay, you're not ready for conflict, okay, your arms are by your side, you haven't had time, you know, to prepare and get into a fighting stance ready to fight. Okay, you're standing there with your mate, you're having a chat, and a psychopath comes up to you, right? A sociopath comes up and wants to harm you. The other thing your arms by your sides teach you in the first movement is the fact that without momentum rippling out from Dan Tien, the body can't move or shouldn't move. Okay? The body should just stay here. So in the first movement, we learn from a relaxed state, a relaxed, grounded structure to shake from Dantian to cause these movements to happen. The reason my arms are dropping is once the momentum's finished, there's nothing left in my arms. It's different to how we do our Taiji form because really the movement in Taiji should be relative to the intensity of how we move from Dantian. So when we're in our slow form and we're moving slowly, there needs to be an element of holding our arms up. Because at this speed of moving, 
okay? That's all my arms are gonna do. To get that, that classical posture of Fisher's Innate to work, I actually need to move fast, right? I need to do it explosively to get my arms to actually have the momentum to move that way, okay? It's like disparity between how we should move and what the form is teaching us. So, the small sand sound. Arm, arm, arm. Pun, block, grab, strike. Block, double palm, push, back fist. Block down, block down. They're both applications of loi. Chi, bop. Okay. Uh, look in the mirror. This movement in the Taiji form. Okay. Uh, so I might have done chi. One. Two, cross my body weight away from the strike, move in. Cross my body weight, move in. Get out of the way of a punch, move in. Bop, punch them straight in the throat, right? Double strike, so this one's done. <clears throat> Double strike, pump first on their arm, bang, ripple, bang. Grab them, pull them down, slant flying. <clears throat> bah! Okay, pung up, blocks an arm, but you're actually practicing striking pung through someone's neck. Okay, bop, grab, pull them under, woof, reef them up, opening up their ribs, bah, strike. Okay, the first movement, preparation comes in next. Okay, <laughs> boom, double strike on their chest. Okay. They cover your arms in, in the two-man set. This is the Sansau, two-man form. They cover your arms and throw them up out of the way, meaning you've got to get out of the way of the next punch coming into your ribs. You come to the side, block, pull it under, bang, strike them in the temple. Same thing. Bah! Strike them on the temple. The last few postures are all single whip. Bang, boom, how it done classically, where you get hook in the arm, pull them, punch them in the ribs with a big downward kind of raking strike. Uh, these days, after doing it for many years, I actually prefer more of a boxer's punch. <laughs> punch them in the ribs, okay? Next strike's coming into this side, moving into it, around, boom, punch them in the ribs. You see the hook of my single whip come in there, <laughs> as it just moves their arm across. Okay, then there's an arm break. Pung up, snap! Snap their arm. Very kind of classical posture. Could be a leg kick in there because I'm heel weighted. Pung up, smash! Smash them into the scapula, ribs, um, up behind the um, mastoid process in the head there. Now more of a classical symbol whip. Hook in their arm, bang! Notice my arm doesn't stay out there. Ever seen a boxer leave his arm out? Does he come back into guard? Whew! Back into guard. They come in with another attack. Whew! Bang, there. They come in for a shoot, like a shoot. Bash both their arms, come up, grab them on the head, drop their head into your knee. Small sand sound, all those moves are the classical nine moves of Taiji form, looks something like this when you do it solo. That's the solo form, doing it by yourself. I sped up because the energy should build up. As your dynamo dantian starts to move, unless you put a concerted effort into going slow, the movements will tend to build up. Uh, 
let's see if I can do it at a full pace. But because when I do it full pace, I move forward, good chance is my head's gonna come out of camera. Okay, so I don't have much room in my living room and it's I'm in Australia and we're flooding at the moment, so there's not much room outside either. <laughs> Sometimes I sit down, right? Um, so I'm going to put on a video now that I took. It's got to be a decade ago of me doing this form with a partner. This is a classical form, cagey, taking our classical postures and teaching us what we're meant to be doing with them to actually get <laughs> martial stuff happening. Thank you very much. Nick Blue from Chief It. Have an awesome day.